I want you to do something with me. There, as I was, um, I went down where we were staying. I went down to the lobby and kind of got off in a private area and we just began to read. And the Lord gave me something. I do these segments that are on a TV called Empower Minutes. It's little one-minute messages. They're all over our website on YouTube. And, um, you know, I was thinking today about problems and, and especially hell, the volume of hell in your mind, and just talking about how, uh, was it Joyce Meyer that did a book called The Battle, what was it called? Battlefield of the Mind. And uh, was just thinking about problems and, the, you know, people talk about the problems they have and the problems and all of this stuff. And the Lord showed me something. I want you to do this with me. Uh, take your hands, if you would just take them and put them out like that, just about like that, and then take them and put them right here, all right? And then keep that space right there between your hands and bring your hands back out right there. Now look at that space. Look at that space. Every problem you'll ever have exists within that space. <laughs> now don't don't put them down. Keep them right there. Take that same that same space in those hands, and then put them right here, and try to fit them <laughs> within this space. How many of y'all know it kind of widens out a little bit? <laughs> Come on now, amen. You say, Terry, why are you having me do that? Here's why. This is what the Lord showed me today: the core of your being is wider than this space right here. Your spirit, the spirit part of you, is much bigger than your mind is. So if every problem I'll ever face exists within that realm, then the same power, listen, the same power that raised Christ from the dead is inside of you. Do you believe that power can handle that much space? <laughs> Amen. Isn't that good? I'm going to make that an empower minute. That's awesome. Every problem, every problem, every storm, every hell, every, whatever it is, it's not so much out here. What's out here only magnifies or I magnify what's out here by what's in here. But every problem, every situation, every storm that I ever face exists right there. Five inches, four inches, whatever. Some of y'all's heads are bigger. Amen. That's why some of you are smarter, right? But that's, that's it. How many of you know two words created everything? Light be. And the known universe was created. I've heard that there's like 800 and something thousand words in the Bible. If two words can create the known universe, do you believe 800,000 can take care of that space? <laughs> Here's my point, and this is what the Lord was giving to me today. No matter what you're facing, His Word is greater than anything. If two words can handle the entire universe, then 800,000 can handle this space. That's awesome. Boy, that kind of brings your problems down to about this <laughs> a peanut size when compared to who you are in your spirit. So it all comes down to this. What are you magnifying? What are you giving your attention to? What are you giving most of your time, your attention, your words too, because whatever you're magnifying here is getting bigger here. Whatever you're giving voice to is getting bigger in your mind. And whatever, that's why I love those confessions, what she was saying, I resist this. How many know the word does say resist the enemy and he'll flee from you? But first it says submit yourselves to God. We have to submit ourselves to His Word, which gives us the authority, the ability, and the power, which is the Holy Spirit, the power to overcome those thoughts of whatever it is, sickness, disease, poverty, anxiety, worry, fear, 
We have to submit ourselves to God. So it's a good thing you're here at 3.35 p.m. You're submitting yourself to the Word today. How many of you love the Word? If you love the Word, I love the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go with me. Two. And I will be, I'm going to be brief today. Um, and that's a relative, I guess, statement. <laughs> brief to some is an hour or two. Well, brief to me is about 15 minutes. So I'm going to be brief today. But I want to give you something that I believe will encourage you. Um, and I have a CD on this teaching. It's entitled The Covenant Benefits of Psalm 91. Um, how many of you like Psalm 91? You like Psalm 91? I have a teaching, and I've got a few of these left in the back too. So again, whatever you want to give, uh, you can take this. But I'm going to just give you a couple of things out of this chapter, Psalm 91, a very familiar chapter. So if you have your Bibles, go to Psalm 91, verse 1. Very familiar. <clears throat> Actually, before, you look, before we look at that, let's go to Psalm 103, verse 2. Or verse 1. Let's look at verse 1. Bless the Lord. Um, you know, let's stop there for a second because what does that mean? I don't know if any of you ever ask questions while you're reading, but, man, I question, all, I, I have a lot of questions. Because why? Inquiring minds want to know. What does bless the Lord mean? Now, coming up in classical Pentecostal upbringing, I always heard bless the Lord. You know, when the preaching was good, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Does that bless the Lord? I don't know. How many of y'all know God is a spirit? He's a father. He has, he, he's not, he doesn't just have love. He is love. So what does it mean to bless the Lord? Does that just mean I say, bless the Lord, when the preacher's preaching really good? <laughs> what does it mean to bless the Lord, oh, my soul? I have three daughters, and oftentimes we'll go on a daddy-daughter date, and I love it. I love that time together. We go on a daddy-daughter date, and, you know, they'll look at me at times and just say, Daddy, you're the best. You're awesome. I love you. You know what that does to me? It blesses me. So what does it mean to bless the Lord? Father, you're awesome. <laughs> There's nobody like you. You're the best. You're a good father. That's what it means to bless the Lord. So, Lord, you're awesome. We love you. Father, you're good. Where do I do that? In my soul. Where is my soul? My mind, my will, my emotions is to tell the Lord how good He is, how awesome He is. And all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And here's what I want to zero in on, verse 2, and forget not all His benefits. Psalm 91 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of of the Most High. What is the secret place? Have you ever asked that question? Have you ever thought about that? What is the secret place of the Most High? Again, growing up in church, I always heard it was my prayer closet. Anybody ever heard of that? Kind of my prayer, that intimacy with the Lord. And listen, that's not a negative thing. How many know that's a good thing? That's a positive thing. But notice it didn't say my place. But it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. What would the secret place of the Most High be? Because whatever it is, it has put all of these benefits, which we are not to forget. All of these covenant benefits that are outlined in Psalm 91, many of you know them. There's long life, there's healing, there's protection, there's angel power. There is promotion. All of these great and awesome benefits are in Psalm 91, but they all hinge on two words, secret place. What is the secret place? How many of y'all want to know what the secret place is? If you want to know it, go with me to 1 Corinthians 2. We're going to look at verse 
7, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7. Again, we're going to find out what the secret place of the Most High is. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Notice these words, the hidden wisdom. Now, if you've got your iPhone or whatever, I'm reading from the New King James. So if you have different translations, you can kind of hang out with me on that. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom. Now, in my Bible, I have that underlined, and I've got a little marker that I wrote the secret, because if something's hidden, (laughs) obviously it's a secret. So he's saying, Paul is saying here, that we speak the wisdom of God, and it's a secret. It's been a secret. It's a hidden wisdom, and he calls it a mystery. What is it? He says it's something that God ordained before the ages for our glory. So church, what was ordained before the ages for our glory that Paul said is a secret, is a mystery, it's a hidden wisdom. To save time, you don't have to turn there, but you'll you'll know this. It's Revelation 13, 8. And it says the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Church, what happens when a lamb is slain? Blood is shed. So what Paul is saying here is that the blood of Jesus that was shed before the foundation of the world, God took that event and kind of sealed that up in himself. And it became a secret a mystery, a hidden wisdom in the Most High, in God. The blood of Jesus that was shed before the foundation of the world became a hidden wisdom in God. Because keep reading verse 8. It says, Which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Had the powers and principalities would have known that the day Jesus hung on that cross, if they would have known that it sealed their defeat, they would have never done it. But how many know they couldn't stop it? Why couldn't they stop it? Because it was a secret. (laughs) Amen? In the Most High. So go back to Psalm 91 and let's read it now in that light. Let's put all of that together and notice how it comes alive. And notice how it's more than just my prayer closet. He who dwells. That word dwells. Actually, the strongest word is forever settle. It's not just like you go in and come out and go in like you would your closet. But you go in. When you enter and dwell, it means you enter and you never come out. The Hebrew word that is translated dwells is also translated forever settle. It means you don't come out. You are eternally secure. You are eternally sheltered in the blood of Jesus. So he who forever settles, he who dwells, he who is secure in the blood of Jesus. The first benefit you get is you get to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Man, that's good right there. We have divine protection from the Godfather. Amen. (laughs) That's awesome. When we enter, when we put our trust, what does that mean to enter into it? It means, Lord, I believe what you did at the cross is greater than any sin I've ever committed, have committed, will ever commit, Lord. I put my faith, my trust, my hope, not in my performance or lack of performance, but it's in Christ alone that I glory and I put my trust. What is that? I'm entering into the secret place. I have entered into the place that God provided from the foundation of the world. 
I'm getting excited. Amen. That's good. That is good. Thank you for the thunderous silence right there. Come on, that's good. That's good. I know there's just a few of us, but y'all need to make even more noise now, right? That's awesome. So, when you settle in the blood of Jesus, when you place your faith in the blood of Jesus, when you place your hope in the blood of Jesus, you don't ever have to fear. You don't ever have to be afraid. You have protection from the Almighty. And it's not just something that goes off and on and off. No, it's something that is secure. It is settled in the blood of Jesus. So when you place your faith in Him, that's the first covenant benefit you get that we should not forget, according to Psalm 103. Don't forget that. You're protected. How many of you know that's good news in California? That you're protected. You are sheltered in the blood of Jesus. And in verse 3 it says, Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. You are delivered from every trap that the enemy has ever set for you. When you're in the blood of Jesus and you place your faith in the blood of Jesus, you're sheltered. You're secure. No evil can come near my dwelling is what verse 10 says. No evil no weapon formed against you shall prosper. What does that mean? That means every word spoken against you as a weapon, it cannot prosper. Why? Because my faith is in the blood of Jesus, and I believe what He did for me delivers me from every curse-filled word that's ever been spoken over me. I had somebody come up to me recently and say, you know, I, there's a curse on my family, and it's a generational thing, and that curse has come upon me. And I told them, the only reason it's come upon you is because you've believed it. You, if you believe the curse is greater than the blessing, then it will be in your life. I choose to believe <laughs> that the blessing that's in here is greater than the curse that I have tried to take hold of. How many know that's a weapon? And no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn if you don't condemn it it will prosper so when the doctor looks at you and says you got this long to live and then you're going to die say well I appreciate your, your expertise but you're only working in one area Amen. Come on, I've got 800,000 words here. I've got a greater area. You're only dealing in one space. And, and that's when you can't start singing that song, I'm only human. No, no, no. That ain't going to fly. Because you're not only human. One third of you is wall to wall Holy Ghost. Amen. Every part of your spirit is, has the same power that raised Christ from the dead. Yes, a part of you is human, but you're not only human. That's good. So, no weapon, which is word, no word, no curse, no lack, no sickness, no word that rises up against you shall prosper. Why? Because you condemn it. How do I condemn it? Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I believe that what Jesus did at the cross released more of the blessing than the enemy has ever released the curse. That's how you condemn it. You are delivered from the snare of the fowler, from the perilous pestilence. You are covered with his feathers under his wings. You take refuge. His truth, which is his word, is your shield, your buckler, Here's how I like to think about that. The blood of Jesus and the Word of God is a divine force field around me. Are there any Trekkies here? Yeah? Couple. She's saying no. He's saying yes. Okay. So there's a few Trekkies here. Anybody like Star Trek or Star Wars? All right. Well, you're just not into that at all. Okay. But there's others are. All right. So 
you know, in these movies, Star Trek, Star Wars, you know when they go to battle, one will fire at the other one, and the other one will throw up what they call a force field. So what is that? It's a device that the weapons of the enemy can't penetrate. That's what the Word of God is to you and your household. It is a force field. It is a device that the weapons of the enemy cannot penetrate. Man, sookie, sookie. Amen? <laughs> I don't know. Creflo Dollar says it, so I said it. Okay. It's just good. It's good. It's 10 till 4. I'm going to close at 4. That was my goal. Right? Does that say 10 till 4? Okay. Because I hear El Pollo Loco. I can just hear. I hear that calling us. <laughs> you are covered with his feathers. You have a force field around you. So in verse 5, you do not have to be afraid of the terror by night. So that means the blood of Jesus has your PM covered. Right? But what about the AM? Well, keep reading. Nor of the arrow that flies by day. That's your AM. Well, Terry, what about when it's noon? Keep reading. Nor of the destruction that lays wasted. <laughs> Man, the blood of Jesus, no matter what time it is, has you covered. You're covered. <sighs> Man, the Lord just wanted me to remind you of what you've got. And that's why he wanted me to read Psalm 103 first. We should not forget his benefits. How many of you can honestly say this world is doing everything they can to get us to forget? They're trying to get us into fear. Fear of, of the economy, fear of the wars going on, fear of other nations, fear of this, fear of that. Everything is fear-based on the outside. And this space in that space the enemy is trying to get fear dominating in that space church we cannot forget the benefits we have as, as believers in Jesus Christ we are delivered we are safe we're secure we have a force field we're strong in the Lord amen a thousand may fall at your side yes it's dark yes there's things going on ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you've made the Lord your refuge, the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil, how much is no? No evil shall befall you. No, any plague, any plague come near your dwelling. Why? Because you got angel power. Amen. I was reminded of that again today. There are so many things happening in the spirit realm, man, that we don't see with the natural eye. And I've heard some people say, well, if I can't see it, I don't believe it. Well, that just simply shows you're not very smart <laughs> because there are TV signals in this room you can't see, but you believe they're there. Why? That's why you plug up a screen. You're tapping into what is being broadcast. And I'm telling you, when you tune your receipt, how many know God's giver it and broken? Could it be the receivers? <laughs> Need to get tuned in to what He's broadcasting. When we tune in to what He's broadcasting, then we begin to see what's in that spirit. But right now, there are, we have angels. Did you know that I was looking across here and counting these seats, how many of this seats? You know, we're not alone here today. We got angel power. Say, well, I don't see it. Well, you're not very smart. <laughs> They're here. <laughs> you're not very thinky, yes. <laughs> Who was it I heard say, I think Billy Graham, I heard him say that every born-again believer has like two angels, one on the left, one on the right. I don't know where he got that from, but hey, I'll take it. I think it was Benny Hinn, I heard him say, every born-again believer has like a million. Well, I don't know where he got it, but I'll take it. How many of y'all know we full gospel? We're going to claim every one of them we can get, right? We, 
Some say two, we say a million. Hallelujah. Increase, increase. Whether it's two or a million, I believe they can get the job done. Amen. I mean, just one. Just one. I think it was in Isaiah uh, 36 or 35, 36, somewhere around there. One angel. Uh, uh, somewhere in there. Uh, the uh, the Assyrians, you, you remember that when the angel of the Lord went out and killed? It was like a hundred and eighty five thousand in one night. A hundred and eighty five thousand in one night. One angel, singular. And you've got two. That's pretty good. I was looking at the population of Riverside coming. It's like three hundred and seventy something thousand. <laughs> So if one can handle 185,000 and two can handle 370, you're pretty safe in Riverside, California. Doesn't matter if everybody in Riverside is against you, you're protected. Two. And Jesus said, I could call 12 legions. And in the Roman military, a legion was 6,000. So I've heard it that he was saying, I could call 72,000. If one can handle 185,000 and two, 370, do you realize what 72,000 could handle? It's like 13 billion. Do you know what the population of planet Earth is? It's like 7 billion. Here's my point. You got more than enough. Come on, remember the space? <laughs> and then here, your spirit's more than enough to take care of what you got going on here. You don't have to fear. Greater is He that's in you. You've got angel power today. And according to the Word, we are not supposed to forget that. Are you getting anything out of this? Is this, is this ministering to you? Amen. Three minutes. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. In their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high. You know what that is? Promotion. Man, I speak promotion over your life today. How many of you can go for some promotion, even at the job, at work? Favor. Favor. Begin to expect it. How many know expectation attracts favor? Write that down. If you take notes, I'd write that down. Expectation attracts favor. Have you ever seen a woman that's pregnant? She's expecting. People will come up to her and give her favor. Strangers. Oh, how are you doing? How far along are Make sure she's pregnant if you ask how far along. <laughs> when are you due? You know what they'll do? They'll throw her parties. They'll give her money. They'll give her gift cards. Why? Because she's expecting. Are you expecting? Expectation attracts favor. When people look at you, do they see you carrying something with such passion, with such desire? Do they, do they want to invest in what you're going to give birth to in your future? Expectation attracts favor. And the Lord says, I'll set you on high. You put your trust in me. You put your expectation in me. You, you, put, you put me as your source. I'll promote you. Amen. You shall call upon me. I'll answer you. I'll be with you in trouble. I'll deliver you. Man, that's so good. He's not just with us, but he delivers us. I'll deliver you and I'll honor you with long life. I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation. Long life. And let me just tell you, when the Bible says long life, when it comes from the Bible, that's a long life. <laughs> because some of them people lived 800, 900 years. <laughs> Amen. So when the Bible says a long life, He'll give you satisfaction. That's a long life. So don't stop till you're satisfied. Don't stop living till you're satisfied. How do you get that satisfaction? When you dwell in the secret place. 
Now do you see why Mick Jagger can't get satisfaction? He's tried and he's tried and he's tried, but it doesn't come through the world. You got to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. So, how do you activate all these benefits? Verse 2, it says, I will say of the Lord. You got to say it. You must say those things that we just read. And I would encourage you this week, say those things. I have favor on my life. I'm protected in the Word of God. His Word is a shield to me. I've got angel power. Lord, I thank you. I receive the prayer that Paul prayed for his partners, that the eyes of my understanding be opened to what I've already got. Not what you're going to do. You've already done it all. Lord, I thank you that my eyes be opened to what you've already provided for me. Healing, protection, angel power, favor. Lord, I receive it. Amen. Did you get anything out of this today? Thank you for allowing us to be with you. I love you and appreciate you. Pastor Brenda's going to come and receive an offering for the ministry. I've already given you the vision. Habakkuk 2.2 says, write the vision and make it plain. I really cannot think of a better ministry opportunity to sow into than this one. And I don't say that because it's us. I say that because of the door the Lord has opened to us. We can't do it alone. I want to take you with us. Every jail we go into, every prison we minister in, every book we send will be you. It will be recorded in heaven as you going. So would you ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me sow today? If you make out a check now here, she can tell you how to do all that. If you're giving at the table, which is different, uh, that's a different thing we do separate. If you make out a check back there, you'll make it out to TTM, or you can do your Visa or MasterCard. We can do all that. So pray and ask the Lord, Lord, how would you have me be involved? And I would think you would agree that the message you heard today needs to be given to those behind prison. They need to know that they can dwell in the secret place of the Most High and that that they have more in their future than they've ever wasted in their past. We can take the gospel to them. We need your help to do it, all right? I love you. I appreciate you. Keep giving people heaven in Riverside, California. God bless. Amen. Amen.